rival Mexican drug cartels battled just miles from the border near Roma, Texas. Officials say the cartels were using machine guns mounted on trucks in a battle over a popular smuggling route. At least one of the groups had a thermal imaging drone. New video of cartels preparing to attack the U.S.-Mexico border goes viral. In a chilling turn of events, a new video has surfaced, capturing the ominous preparations of cartels poised to strike the U.S.-Mexico border. The viral footage paints a disturbing picture of organized groups gearing up for potential confrontations, raising concerns about the security of the border region. The simple yet alarming scenes captured in the video serve as a stark reminder of the pressing challenges authorities face in safeguarding the border against potential threats. Join us as we delve into this unsettling glimpse into the escalating tensions at the heart of this crucial international boundary. The US-Mexico border war has begun. The US-Mexico border war has erupted and the shocking truth is finally being exposed. To truly understand the gravity of the situation, we must delve into the history and background of this ongoing conflict. It is a tale of power, greed, and the battle for control over one of the most notorious borders in the world. The story begins with the rise of Mexican drug cartels, powerful criminal organizations that have plagued Mexico for decades. These cartels, such as the Gulf Cartel and the Northeast Cartel, have established a stronghold along the border, using it as a gateway for their illicit activities. The cartel's operations involve the smuggling of drugs, weapons, and human trafficked migrants into the United States. They have built a vast network of tunnels, hidden routes, and corrupt connections, allowing them to transport contraband across the border undetected. Over time, the cartels have become increasingly brazen, engaging in violent clashes with rival factions and even Mexican authorities. Their thirst for power and control knows no bounds, and the border has become a battleground for their territorial disputes. The situation escalated further when the cartels realized the potential profits of exploiting the desperation of migrants seeking a better life in the United States. They began using these vulnerable individuals as pawns in their criminal enterprises, exploiting their hopes and dreams for their own gain. As the cartels grew in strength and influence, the United States found itself facing a new kind of threat. The infiltration of cartel members into U.S. territory became a pressing concern for law enforcement agencies. The cartel's foot soldiers, armed and dangerous, blended in with the crowds of migrants, making it difficult to distinguish friend from foe. The U.S. government, recognizing the need to secure its borders and protect its citizens, implemented various measures to combat the cartel's activities. Border patrol agents were deployed, surveillance technology was enhanced, and cooperation with Mexican authorities was strengthened. However, the cartels proved formidable adversaries, constantly adapting their tactics to evade capture. The battle for control over the U.S.-Mexico border intensified, with both sides resorting to extreme measures. The cartels fortified their positions, establishing strongholds along the border and even on islands like Fronton Island, which became a strategic location for their operations. In response, Texas officials declared Fronton Island a state territory in September, allowing law enforcement to operate more effectively in the area. This move was a crucial step towards reclaiming the island from the clutches of the cartels and restoring safety and security to the region. However, the fight is far from over. The cartels continue to pose a significant threat, infiltrating the island and engaging in confrontations with law enforcement. The battle for control over the U.S.-Mexico border rages on, with the stakes higher than ever before. Fronton Island, nestled in the Rio Grande and claimed as U.S. territory, has become a notorious stronghold for the cartel. Once a peaceful part of the border, this small piece of land has transformed into a battleground for control and a hub for criminal activities. Locally known as an island of death, Fronton Island is crawling with gang members and ringed with sniper nests. The cartels have established a firm grip on the island, using it as a strategic location to stash contraband and launch their operations into the United States. The situation on Fronton Island is dire. The rival cartels, such as the Gulf Cartel and the Northeast Cartel, engage in violent clashes over the loot they stash in the undergrowth and scrubland. These battles for control often result in bloodshed and further escalate the tensions along the border. However, the fight to reclaim Fronton Island has not been in vain. In September, Texas officials declared the island a state territory, a crucial step towards restoring law and order. This declaration allows law enforcement to operate more effectively in the area and regain cartel's control. Since then, the Texas Department of Public Safety has taken swift action. Personnel have moved into the area, clearing out much of the vegetation to create a clearer line of sight and monitor cartel activity more closely. Their presence serves as a deterrent to the cartels, but the battle is far from over. Lieutenant Chris Olivares of the Texas Department of Public Safety 
revealed that they have encountered armed gunmen and cartel members on Fronten Island. Confrontations have occurred and ammunition has been discovered, highlighting the ongoing threat posed by the cartels. The efforts to reclaim Fronton Island have not come without challenges. The cartels, resourceful and determined, continue to find ways to infiltrate the island and evade law enforcement. Their vast resources, financial power, and intricate networks make them formidable adversaries. Some local officials express doubts about the effectiveness of reclaiming the island. They believe the cartels will find alternative routes and methods to move their commodities north or south, viewing the state's actions as merely temporary setbacks. However, Texas Land Commissioner Dawn Buckingham remains steadfast in her commitment to reclaiming Fronton Island. She emphasizes that the island has always been Texas land and that the declaration of state territory is necessary to ensure the region's safety and security. The battle for Fronton Island is a critical part of the larger U.S.-Mexico border war. Reclaiming this strategic location will not only disrupt the cartel's operations, but also send a powerful message that the United States will not tolerate their criminal activities on its soil. As the fight continues, law enforcement agencies remain vigilant, constantly adapting their strategies to outsmart the cartels. The determination to reclaim Fronton Island and secure the border is unwavering, driven by the need to protect American citizens and maintain the integrity of the nation. Operation Lone Star Is it legal? In March 2021, Texas Governor Greg Abbott launched Operation Lone Star, a bold and controversial border security initiative. The governor pointed fingers at President Joe Biden's immigration policies, blaming them for the surge in border crossings. Determined to take matters into his own hands, Abbott issued a disaster declaration, granting him the authority to deploy the Texas National Guard to the border. This declaration covered 53 counties, most of them located on or near the border. Initially, Operation Lone Star began with the deployment of 500 Texas National Guard members to the border. However, as the situation escalated, so did the response. In September 2021, House Bill 9 was passed by the Texas legislature, authorizing nearly $2 billion for border security over the next two years. This brought the biennium's total border security budget to almost $3 billion. Additionally, the bill allocated $750 million to build a state-funded border wall, which Governor Abbott called on his supporters to fund through donations. As of February 11, 2022, over $55 million had been contributed by private donors. With the increased funding, Operation Lone Star saw a significant expansion. In September 2021, an additional 1,800 soldiers from the Texas National Guard were deployed to the border. This was followed by another directive from Governor Abbott in response to the sudden arrival of 16,000 migrants in Del Rio. He directed 1,000 personnel from the Texas Department of Public Safety DPS, and an additional 400 Texas National Guard members to the border. The operation reached its peak in November 2021 when up to 10,000 National Guard members were sent to the border. These troops were tasked with aiding in the arrests of individuals involved in border-related crimes, such as drug smuggling and human trafficking. However, as the operation unfolded, questions arose about the effectiveness and purpose of the Texas National Guard's presence at the border. In January 2022, a leaked morale survey shed light on the experiences of the Texas National Guard members involved in Operation Lone Star. The survey revealed a rushed and involuntary deployment, poor working conditions, delayed pay, and a lack of state benefits. These revelations painted a grim picture of the toll the operation was taking on the troops. Tragically, at least four National Guard members tied to Operation Lone Star took their own lives in 2021. The Army Times reported this alarming statistic in December of that year. In response, 13 Texas Democrats sent a letter to Colonel Daniel Heap, the Inspector General of the Texas Military Department, demanding a comprehensive investigation into the impact of Operation Lone Star on the well-being, morale, and overall readiness of the troops. As the operation continued, its impact on migrants and the legal system came under scrutiny. The Texas Tribune first reported in September 2021 that hundreds of people arrested and detained under Operation Lone Star were not charged with a crime for weeks. Furthermore, dozens of migrants were not provided with legal representation for over a month in violation of Texas law. The state requires that criminals be assigned an attorney within three days of requesting one, and defendants must be released from jail if prosecutors delay cases by not filing charges promptly. However, most imprisoned migrants were charged with 
with trespassing, which allowed for a longer deadline of 15 or 30 days, depending on the severity of the charge. While the governor's website boasts impressive numbers, claiming that as of March 4, 2022, state troopers and National Guard members serving under Operation Lone Star have arrested 208,000 migrants and filed over 11,800 criminal charges. An investigation by the Texas Tribune, ProPublica, and the Marshall Project revealed a different story. The state had been counting arrests and drug charges that were physically distant from the border, unrelated to criminal activity at the border, and not investigated by DPS or the Texas Military Department. This revelation raised serious concerns about the accuracy and integrity of the reported numbers. While Operation Lone Star may have been launched with the intention of securing the border, its legality has come under intense scrutiny. The federal government holds sole authority to enforce immigration laws, raising questions about the extent to which Texas can enforce its own immigration measures through this operation. Under the disaster declaration issued by Governor Abbott, trespassing penalties were increased and state troopers were directed to arrest migrants on state trespassing charges when they were caught on private property. This policy, known as the catch and jail approach, prompted 26 Democrats from Texas and across the country to send a letter to the federal government in October 2021, calling for an investigation into whether this policy violated state law and the U.S. Constitution. Critics argue that the catch and jail policy goes beyond the scope of state authority and encroaches on federal jurisdiction. They contend that immigration enforcement is the responsibility of federal agencies agencies such as Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE, and Customs and Border Protection CBP. By taking matters into their own hands, state troopers may be overstepping their bounds and potentially violating the rights of migrants. Furthermore, the prolonged detention of migrants under Operation Loan Star has raised serious concerns about due process. The Texas Tribune first reported in September 2021 that hundreds of people arrested and detained under the operation were not charged with a crime for weeks. This prolonged detention without charges directly violates Texas law, which mandates that criminals be assigned an attorney within three days of requesting one. Additionally, state law requires that defendants be released from jail if prosecutors delay cases by not filing charges promptly. The situation is further complicated by the fact that most imprisoned migrants are charged with trespassing, which allows for a longer deadline of 15 or 30 days, depending on the severity of the charge. However, defense lawyers have argued that the prolonged imprisonments are continuing without judicial intervention, raising concerns about the erosion of due process rights. The Biden administration has yet to publicly address the complaints raised by the 26 Democrats regarding the catch and jail policy. Thousands of migrants have been held in state prisons, converted into jails for immigration-related crimes, further fueling the debate over the legality and ethics of Operation Lone Star. Texas Democrats have been vocal in their criticism of Operation Lone Star, arguing that it prioritizes short-term, law enforcement-based solutions over a more comprehensive and humanitarian approach to border security. State Representative Rafael Anchia, a Democrat from Dallas, has criticized the initiative for lacking clear metrics to measure its success. He believes that the state should focus on addressing the root causes further fueling the debate over the legality and ethics of Operation Lone Star. On enforcement measures, the controversy surrounding Operation Lone Star extends beyond the legal realm. The leaked morale survey from January 2022 revealed the challenges Texas National Guard members faced in the operation. They expressed dissatisfaction with the rushed and involuntary deployment, poor working conditions, delayed pay, and lack of state benefits. These revelations have raised concerns about the well-being, morale, and overall readiness of the troops involved in the operation. U.S. War on Mexican Cartels In recent years, the United States has faced a growing threat from Mexican drug cartels and their influence on American soil. This has led to a heated debate among presidential candidates and members of Congress about the use of military force to combat combat these cartels. The circumstances under which a state can employ force against or within another state are well established in international law. These include instances where the United Nations Security Council authorizes the use of force when the other state gives its consent or when the first state acts in self-defense. In the case of the proposed U.S. war on Mexican cartels, it is unlikely that the Security Council would authorize such action and the Mexican government has explicitly opposed foreign intervention, citing violations of sovereignty. This leaves self-defense as the sole possible international law justification for the U.S. use of force against Mexican drug cartels. According to Article 
51 of the United Nations Charter, a state has the right to self-defense when facing an armed attack. This encompasses the right to defend against an imminent armed attack or a threat thereof. The United States interprets this to mean that force can be used inside another state in self-defense against non-state actors if the territorial state is unwilling or unable to suppress the threat. However, this interpretation is contested by some states and the International Court of Justice, arguing that it violates Article 2.4 of the Charter, which prohibits the use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. The definition of an armed attack has no consensus among states. The U.S. perspective, outlined by Harold Coe, includes cyber activities resulting in physical harm, property damage, death, or significant destruction as a use of force. Proponents of military intervention against Mexican cartels cite incidents like a grenade attack on the U.S. consulate as potential threats, justifying the need for self-defense. However, scenarios such as border shootings by cartels may not meet the threshold of an armed attack under international law. The proposed authorization to use force against cartels includes responding to kinetic actions against governmental personnel of any country in the Western Hemisphere, but this lacks support in international law. The flow of fentanyl into the U.S. has been deemed by some as constituting an attack. Proposals to combat this threat, like bombing fentanyl labs, raise questions about the legal justification for using force. From an international law perspective, employing force against the cartels without Mexico's consent would be challenging to justify, while self-defense could potentially serve as a legal justification. Careful consideration of the severity of the threat and the necessity and proportionality of any military action is imperative. The risks. In recent years, the idea of using U.S. military force against Mexican cartels has gained traction, particularly within the Republican Party. However, such notions are not only irresponsible, but also carry real risks. Addressing the surge in drug flow, especially the dangerous opioid fentanyl, into the United States has become a critical concern due to its contribution to a rise in opioid overdose deaths. While the notion of a forceful response may seem like tough talk, it's crucial to grasp the potential consequences and risks of waging a war on drug cartels. First and foremost, any U.S. intervention in Mexico would likely proceed without Mexico's cooperation, as the Mexican government strongly opposes such action, rendering operations illegal under international law and reducing their chances of success due to a lack of coordination. Unilateral action by the U.S. might lead Mexico to cease other counter-drug cooperation, worsening the problem, even symbolic strikes pose a substantial risk of backfire. Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador has criticized the proposed cartel war authorization, making it clear that unilateral intervention would significantly cost U.S.-Mexico relations. The economic fallout could be severe, with Mexico potentially retaliating by disrupting U.S. supply chains and impacting the intertwined economies. Past experiences, like Operation Condor in the 1970s, should serve as a cautionary tale, highlighting the limitations of using force to combat organized crime in Mexico and the potential unintended consequences that may follow. The same pattern emerged during the Merida Initiative, a security cooperation arrangement between the U.S., Mexico, and Central American states. While military efforts may have removed crime bosses from their positions, they were easily replaced, and the number of criminal groups in Mexico has more than doubled in the past 15 years. The expansion of drug production and trafficking in Latin America further demonstrates the limitations of the existing drug control regime. The Sinaloa and Jalisco New Generation cartels operating in many countries in the region show the futility of a purely military approach. Military might alone is insufficient in combating organized crime and drug trafficking, a comprehensive strategy that systematically prosecutes criminal networks and addresses the conditions contributing to recruitment is necessary. The risks and consequences of U.S. military intervention in Mexico extend beyond the immediate impact on U.S.-Mexico relations. The normalization of war talk and the potential for unilateral military action create a dangerous precedent. The more these ideas become normalized, the greater the risk that a future U.S. president struggling with a future version of the fentanyl crisis might be drawn to the idea of taking unilateral military action. This weakens the constraints on the U.S. president's ability to direct limited uses of force deemed to be in the national interest, potentially leading to a cycle of military interventions in the region. In terms of counter-narcotics efforts, a comprehensive strategy that includes cooperation, intelligence sharing, and joint operations is crucial. Unilateral military action by the U.S. undermines the effectiveness of these efforts, a comprehensive approach that focuses on prosecution, prevention, and addressing the underlying issues contributing to drug trafficking is necessary for long-term 
program's success. Cartels shaping us, Mexico, political shifts. Over the years, the influence of cartels has extended far beyond our southern neighbors, infiltrating the very fabric of American society. From record-breaking border encounters to the alarming rise in violence, the impact of cartels on U.S.-Mexico relations cannot be ignored. The 2000s marked a turning point in Mexico's history as the power and reach of cartels began to grow exponentially. These criminal organizations, fueled by the insatiable demand for drugs in the United States, have transformed into formidable forces that operate with military precision. Led by ruthless leaders and armed with sophisticated weaponry, the cartels have infiltrated every aspect of Mexican society. They have amassed unimaginable wealth through their control of the drug trade, enabling them to corrupt law enforcement, judiciary systems, and even elected officials. Once upon a time, cartels had to work with law enforcement, seeking their permission and coordination. But now, the tables have turned. Governments find themselves at the mercy of these criminal organizations, forced to navigate a treacherous landscape where cartels dictate what can and cannot be done. The extent of this corruption is staggering. Cartels have infiltrated the ranks of Mexican police, bribing officers to turn a blind eye to their activities. They have compromised judges, ensuring that their members evade justice and they have even bought the loyalty of elected officials who serve their interests rather than those of the people. With their ill-gotten wealth, cartel leaders live lives of luxury, flaunting their power and influence. They operate as if they were a parallel government, exerting control over vast territories and populations. Their paramilitary-like operations strike fear into the hearts of those who dare to oppose them. The consequences of cartel dominance are devastating. Violence has become a daily reality for many Mexicans as rival cartels battle for control Control, and innocent civilians are caught in the crossfire. The murder rate in Mexico is four times higher than that of the United States, a chilling statistic that highlights the magnitude of the problem. Families mourn the loss of loved ones, victims of a war waged by cartels. Mass shootings, kidnappings, and disappearances have become all too common, leaving communities shattered and living in constant fear. But the influence of Mexican cartels doesn't stop at the border. Their operations extend deep into the United States, where they distribute drugs like fentanyl, and methamphetamine to major cities and rural towns. The consequences of their actions are felt in the form of overdose deaths, addiction, and the destruction of lives. Law enforcement agencies on both sides of the border are engaged in a constant battle to disrupt cartel operations, but the sheer scale and complexity of the problem make it an uphill struggle. The cartels have proven time and again that they are a force to be reckoned with using their military intelligence, weapons, and equipment to outmaneuver authorities. The porous nature of the U.S.-Mexico border further exacerbates the issue. Smuggling routes are constantly evolving, and the cartels exploit any weaknesses in border security to further their illicit activities. The longest border in the world, stretching nearly 2,000 miles, presents a monumental challenge for law enforcement agencies on both sides. The urgency of the situation has not gone unnoticed by U.S. lawmakers. Calls for action have grown louder, with proposals to designate cartels as terror organizations and authorize the use of military force to dismantle their operations. But the Mexican government has has pushed back, asserting its sovereignty and rejecting any foreign intervention. As tensions escalate, the growing influence of Mexican cartels is shaping the political landscape between the United States and Mexico. The infiltration of criminal organizations into politics forces both nations to confront a harsh reality. Cartels, expanding in power and reach, actively seek to control governments, influence policies, and shape political agendas. Recognizing the significance of political connections, cartels employ tactics like bribing politicians and funding campaigns to secure allies who turn a blind eye or actively support their interests. This symbiotic relationship threatens the integrity of democratic institutions with corruption, eroding public trust, and undermining the rule of law. Citizens, feeling the consequences of this alliance, demand accountability and an end to the impunity enjoyed by those in power. In response, joint operations between the United States and Mexico aim to dismantle cartel networks and bring leaders to justice. While successful in disrupting cartel operations and weakening their influence, these organizations prove resilient, adapting quickly to evade capture and continue criminal enterprises. Both countries prioritize border security, investing heavily in surveillance technology, and deploying additional resources to detect and intercept cartel activities. The ongoing battle raises critical questions about the long-term implications and potential solutions in this complex and high-stakes struggle. Diplomatic 
efforts have been employed to address the complex issue of cartel activities along the US-Mexico border. High-level meetings between officials from both countries have expressed a shared commitment to combating drug-related violence. However, cooperation faces challenges due to differing political realities and priorities. In the United States, lawmakers propose various measures to confront the cartel threat. Some advocate for designating cartels as terrorist organizations, enabling military force usage. Others focus on strengthening border security and providing additional resources to law enforcement. In Mexico, President Andres Manuel López Obrador emphasizes tackling root causes like poverty. Social programs aim to reduce inequality and offer alternatives to cartel involvement. Community-based initiatives empower residents to resist cartel influence through education, job creation, and fostering a sense of belonging. Impact of cartel violence on communities is profound, tearing apart families and destroying livelihoods. Healing requires addressing immediate security concerns and underlying social and economic factors. While the battle against cartels continues, the political landscape evolves. Criminal organizations' influence poses a significant challenge to both countries' governments, not just for law and order, but for the very essence of democracy. The fight against cartels persists, but there's hope. Community resilience, law enforcement dedication, and political and activist determination contribute to the ongoing struggle for a safer and more just society. By working together, the United States and Mexico can confront the cartel menace head-on, dismantling their networks and restoring faith in democratic institutions. Despite the challenges, the stakes are too high to ignore. Cartel Island, focal point of the war. Cartel Island, or Fronton Island, is a 170-acre, mile-long landmass in the middle of the Rio Grande. For years, this island has been a hotbed of criminal activity, serving as a stronghold for the ultra-violent Mexican cartels, namely the Gulf Cartel and Cartel del Noreste, CDN. But how did this island become such a focal point in the war? To understand the significance of Cartel Island, delve into the ownership dispute between the United States and Mexico. Both nations have avoided working on the island without proper permission, allowing cartels to establish dominance, using it as a safe haven for their operatives and a strategic location for drug trafficking. Ownership ambiguity has increased the island's value for cartels and turned it into a major drug trafficking corridor. Law enforcement hesitates and cartels take advantage, using the island for smuggling drugs northward and transporting cash and weapons southbound. Cartels' control over Cartel Island allows them to monitor the only paved road accessible to U.S. law enforcement, giving them the upper hand in timing illicit activities. This display of power emboldens cartels, leading to increased violence in the region. Governor Abbott's decision marks a turning point. The operation to reclaim Cartel Island shows Texas's commitment to residents' safety and ending the cartel's reign of terror. The future remains uncertain, and only time will reveal the operation's impact on violence and drug trafficking in the region. As dawn breaks on a fateful day, a Texas Rangers commander addresses a heavily armed assembly, emphasizing the operation's significance. Troops listen intently to instructions, preparing for a mission to retake Cartel Island, a 170-acre landmass in the Rio Grande. The commander warns of burned-out structures used as sniper perches and cautions about booby traps on the island. Troops are briefed on potential threats, emphasizing caution and restraint in the face of gunfire. Preparations complete, troops set off towards Cartel Island, determined to reclaim it. Drones scout ahead, and the mission begins, navigating challenges like dense vegetation and constant threats from cartel gunmen. The operation aims to secure Cartel Island, denying its future use to cartels. The troops understand the importance of their mission, recognizing it as a battle for the safety and security of the region's residents. The battle against cartels continues to shape the complex relationship between the United States and Mexico. In the coming days, we will witness the outcomes of this courageous effort and explore the evolving dynamics that hold profound implications for both nations. This was all from our side. Thank you for staying with us. If you enjoy our content, our newest videos are just a click away.